Hi there everyone, Lars here with another book review brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And in this review, I want to have a look at Shadow Binders, the, the webcomic turned graphic novel series done by Neon and Geeky Sparkles from over at Clownfish TV. This is something that I've actually really wanted to read and review now for a while. And partly because I'm really fascinated at the creative works that other YouTubers make, especially if their channels are geared towards reviewing stories, updating people on entertainment, and breaking down storytelling, which is something that Neon and Geeky maybe don't do quite as much now as they once did, but once upon a time they definitely gave way more insights and reviews into stories. And since they themselves are storytellers, I really wanted to have a look at their own work. Is what they themselves, what they have written, does it compare to their own insights? And I am pleased to say that Shadowbinders and Crimson Wren, their prequel story, works really, really well. Yeah, it's nothing earth-shattering. It's nothing that's going to completely revolutionize the way that we do storytelling. Instead, it is fun, good, just really nice, a really nice traditional hero's journey storyline. Just because we say there's many ways that you can do the hero's journey doesn't mean that it's not a bad route to go. And man, I love that this story is a combination of steampunk, magic, and world hopping. It's got all the things that just tickle my funny bone. In short, Shadowbinders is about a girl named Mia. This girl who's in high school who is a little bit of a klutz. She's normally running late for everything that she does. She's a bit of a mess. She's got two nice friends, but she's considered an outcast by most of the people within her school. So there doesn't seem to be anything particularly interesting about her, nor does she seem to have any sort of practical skills. However, her sadly deceased grandfather does leave her with some parting gifts that her grandma delivers. This old book with all these crazy designs of other places and ships and machines that she doesn't understand, and a box with a ring in it. Well, when she puts on the ring, the ring doesn't come off, and the ring begins to do, it begins to do interesting things, like sending her to a completely different place. Planet. And on this planet, she meets Crimson Wren, one of the last free flying mages on this world. And this guy's life is just like it's like <laughs> the, it's like Jack Sparrow, but with tons of magic and way more boldness on the part of Crimson Wren. Depend it depends on the reader if you think that he's got more charisma than Captain Jack Sparrow. I'll leave that up to you to decide. <laughs> Well, Mia falls in with Ren and his crew. They're not sure what to make of her, but, well, she's there. And what's more is that as the story continues, and as she begins to hop back and forth between Ren's ship and Earth, things begin to happen. She begins to exhibit other magical powers that she herself doesn't understand, and neither does Ren. And on top of that, she seems to be gaining insights into what's happening within their world based on dreams that she's been having. Dreams that she's been having even before she began world hopping. Mia has a connection to Ren, and we're not exactly sure what it is, and this is what the story is exploring. And of course, there's all different kinds of things happening. There is this evil duke who is going to overthrow all the governments of the world in this grand coup, and it's going off pretty well, at least this point in the series. And there's all different kinds of really interesting villains being thrown into the mix. The artwork... Though maybe not quite the quality that people might want for a graphic novel, is fun and it definitely communicates, in my opinion, just the breadth and depth of this other world and how it has merged magic with steampunk technology in just a really cool way. It fits. And Mia and Ren as the main characters are definitely a lot of fun to read. They definitely carry the story and they have a really neat like Han and Leia relationship going on right there which I personally really enjoy. I will say that for a lot of the side characters and some of the side stories they're definitely not as engaging as the main plotline. 
They serve to help bolster Mia and Ren, to give you a little bit more understanding of what's happening in the world. And some of these side characters definitely have moments where they shine, but oftentimes they kind of fall into the same trap that you find, with, for instance, within harem anime, where you have a wonderful, go wonderful girl introduced to the team, and she does something really amazing when she's introduced, but otherwise we don't talk about her, we just show her until it's time that she is useful again. And that's how it sometimes feels with some of the side characters, especially Tristan, who, which is kind of sad considering that the prequel story, Crimson Wren, he features prominently and he's definitely a really good foil to Wren. But that doesn't communicate into Shadowbinders. So there's definitely something that's missing right there and it intrigues me i want to know more i definitely want more of shadow binders i want more of crimson wren i want to know what happens with wren and with mia i want to know what's going to happen with the great scheme to overthrow the governments of the world and i want to see more of the magic and the steampunk goodness there's a lot to love within this story if you have the chance to check out shadow binders i highly recommend that you do let's give uh geeky and neon all the support that we can especially if you are fans of independent creators especially if you are fans of and of hand-drawn animation and of just good graphic novel fun especially if you're fans of of magic and steampunk and world hopping all things that once again that just tickles my funny bone this is just a story that i think needs to go into way more people's hands and if they can see that there's definitely a push that they should continue on with the story, I think that they will do it. And I would love that. But ultimately, I just have to say, I'm very happy to see that Neon and Geeky Sparkles actually hold to the advice and the criticisms that they give to other creatives out on their own channel. That they talk about how you need to have good chemistry between characters. You have that with Ren and his crew and between Ren and Mia. They talk about, you know, it's a totally fine to still have your traditional swashbuckling male hero. It's fine to have the damsel in distress because you can make those characters actually very interesting, especially the damsel in distress, because while Mia at times is a damsel in distress, there are moments where she completely turns the tables on everyone and she is in a position of power. And that's really fun to see. They also really get down what teenage relationships are like, and they don't make it overly angsty or overly complicated. They just tell it like it is. And reading Mia's life at home, that was something I was like, I've seen that with the students that I taught when I was a high school teacher. And I even lived through some of that stuff as a teenager. I would have loved to have done world hopping as a teenager, but unfortunately, I haven't yet found my magic ring, nor have I gotten my letter from Hogwarts yet. Ugh. <laughs> but it's nice to see that they also know how to do decent pacing, how they build up reveals for certain characters, and the action is pretty good too. The dialogue does need some working on. Um, there's definitely some places where it falls a little bit flat, where it feels like we're missing something. Uh, so a rough stone rolling, but nonetheless a really beautiful one to look at and something that's just fun i enjoy just kicking back and taking my time over the course of three days reading one of the novels each day and just enjoying it and so again i just really hope that we get more of this from neon and geeky more from clownfish tv if you'd like to uh, check out Shadowbinders and Crimson Rhyme for yourself, definitely head on over to their websites. I'll have a link for that in the description below. Let's give some love to the other creatives who are out there. Let's show that it's not just the mainstream media and their storytellers who get to control what kinds of stories we consume. Go and support other creators. Go and support other storytellers. So, with that all being said, thank you guys for listening to my review of Shadowbinders and Crimson Wren. If you would like to have more analyses, more breakdowns, more reviews, and the likes, please check out our other videos here on our channel. More is on the way, or you can head on over to our podcast, Camille's Harem. And if you especially like the ideas of world hopping, magic, steampunk, check out the books that I have written. Links for them are also going to be in the description below. Definitely check out The Legend of the Ten Lords and Bleed, Steam, and Steel, written by yours truly. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining us on this adventure that we call writing, and until the next video, y'all, choose.